everyone simon here i am back with a correction to my previous video on the grand conjunction of jupiter and saturn which is really happening now it's official tomorrow morning and uh but the correction is that uh which planet would be superior on top of the other by declination and i read my uh my software wrong i was reading the speed uh indicator not the uh declination indicator and uh some of you pointed that out and i want to thank you for pointing it out uh and keeping me honest so i'm making this follow-up uh correction video also to show you how they're actually going to look in the sky so as you can see behind me here we have the Stellarium app, and I this is available on the web, stellarium-web.org. Um, I hope everyone uses it. It's a wonderful app. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with it, like uh, you can add equatorial grid to see just where the planets are. This red line is the ecliptic line. You can add constellations. Cool, pretty cool, huh? You can add the lines of the constellations and their names. All of that good and jazzy stuff. We're going to leave that out for the moment. Um, and let me move my face here. And you can see also you can have a time feature where you can move forward or backwards in time. So, for example, uh, if I move this back a little bit, you can see the sky move. And there's the sun. Wow. And there's Venus. How cool is that? And you can see visually how the sun is literally it at the heart of the milky way galaxy now the other cool thing is you can zoom so i'm going right on the screen and doing the zoom function and there are sun and mercury how cool is that and here you can see all of the yoga tadas the fixed stars in the constellation of sagittarius you have nunki caos borealis caos media uh, a couple of nebulae uh, very cool stuff here. So, uh, and nebulae, as we just covered in our uh, medical astrology pro forma, are never good for eyesight. So uh, this is also a, a classic a dictum in uh, traditional tropical astrology uh, or Western astrology, if you will, that if you have the sun or the moon or significant planets ruling eyesight, like the second ruler of the second house, on a nebula, uh, it can indicate cataracts or even blindness. So, um, but that's not the topic here for today. The topic is to take a look at, I want you to actually see Jupiter and Saturn's position because if I zoom out, all you see is this white dot. But if I zoom in and the more I zoom in, oh, look at that cool little satellite. Hey, Mr. Satellite, how you doing? Nice, just driving by little drive by um so look there they are so there is saturn on top of jupiter these are their moons now you can only see this through a telescope i the magnitude i have is this is far more than uh you know you can see with the naked with a naked eye it's something like this okay so it looks like one mass um but there they are and you can clearly see that by declination saturn is is and will be on top of jupiter so if i just move this forward here oops whoa that went too fast let's try again um if i focus here and move this forward in time hopefully this should work no <laughs> okay it didn't focus on my object but um you can play around with this and you'll see that yes saturn at the time of the conjunction will be on top so what does that mean practically speaking well in the previous video um i told you that um jupiter by being brighter typically should win the planetary war and that has not changed but the fact uh, and so in fact and there's starlink uh the fact that um Saturn is the dimmest of all the planets 
One astrologer, Mr. Shadri Ayer, used to say that he loses all planetary wars. Um, but I'd like to think that there is a case to be made for Saturn having some dignity here because he is in his own sign after all. If we click the constellations and turn on, turn that on, and you can see, look at that, there's the goat. They're right by the goat. And uh, this is, in fact, his own sign. Um, and Saturn, uh, and even in Western, in the tropical zodiac, Saturn is his own, is his own sign. So there is dignity here. But Saturn is on top of Jupiter. So what does this mean practically? Well, again, as I said in the previous video, anytime there's a planetary war, there is a, a destabilization of the planets involved. So if you're... So how does this apply to you? If you're running a period of Saturn or you're running a period of Jupiter, this is a time to relax, chill, stay at home. Christmas is a few days away. Um, there may be some planetary wars around Christmas time <laughs> because this will still be in effect all the way until December 30th, I believe. So maybe this year it's good to have a virtual Christmas. Uh, maybe it's not the year to discuss politics at the dinner table. Maybe it's not the year to have very controversial things because there's a lot happening in the sky. The sun is at its lowest point by declination. Um, it's literally the solstice, which means the sun standing still. And... Um, and it's the death of the sun, if you will. This is the death and resurrection of the sun between the 21st and the 25th. So this is a very delicate time where your energies may be low, where you may be torn in two directions, especially if you're running the period of Saturn or Jupiter, because honestly, both of them are going to be destabilized. Now, the fact that Saturn is on top means if you're running a Saturn period, you should probably overcome you will overcome these difficulties if you're running a jupiter period jupiter is debilitated but he's brighter so you will also overcome these difficulties though it may take you a little bit longer okay because jupiter, a debilitated planet is a slow starter and it, it it finds its way later in life so if you have debilitated venus you may find true love later in life if you have debilitated jupiter you may find true wisdom you know later in life you have debilitated mars um uh you know you may find your um your perfect shape right or your your ambitions fulfilled later in life and so forth or, or later than you would like later in life could mean when you're 30 if you're very ambitious right so but it's there's still a delay to the fructification of the meanings of a debilitated planet it's like uh, the signal is is off so if you're running Jupiter, you will also triumph, but just it's going to take a little more time. And in the previous video, I talked about how this is a um, this is the beginning of potentially great things. Now, many people believe that the conjunction in 7 BC of Saturn and Jupiter, which was a triple conjunction, it was, it happened in May of that year, then in September, and then in December. So it went, right, the planets met, they got together, then Jupiter went ahead, right, back, and then again, because um, Jupiter is a faster moving planet. That triple conjunction, many believe, was the a star that is referred to in the Bible, and it was also super close like this one to where it would appear as one bright star. And what lends credence to this is the idea that if they, if the astrologers of old, and by the way, it would be astrologers who would notice this, saw it in May and they knew it would return, then that gave them time to pack. Like presumably they were in India or somewhere to the east, right? East of... Uh, uh, of Jerusalem and to pack and make a pilgrimage to follow the birth 
and witness the birth of the king. And it's no small thing that it is astrologers who are, uh, or at least sky watchers, what are called the Magi, who are responsible for saving the young Jesus's life because they went and lied to Herod, right? And they told him he went that way, right? When he went the other way. And, um, and they gave him their early blessings, perhaps intimations of what they knew he would be. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh are strange gifts, uh, but uh, some believe that they augured that, yes, he would become a king, but also that he would need healing uh, because these are healing herbs to help preserve wounds and so forth. So symbolic, perhaps, of uh, Jesus's life. Whatever the case, it could be that this is the birth of something great, and the, this, this is the birth of something great in your life. And so in the previous video, I talked about allowing your higher angels to, to triumph. And, um, you know, in some ways we are divided, you know, politically and otherwise, but in most ways we're actually united. If you go talk to your neighbor about 90% of the things you talk about, you're going to get along. And then you bring up politics or you bring up sports or you bring up something else or religion. And then they're going to pull out the knife and you're going to pull out a gun and you're going to try to kill each other. But on 90% of things, we agree. So this Christmas and this holiday season, I should say, uh, focus on the 90%. Don't focus on the 10%. And work on cultivating your better angels. Because with Saturn winning this planetary war by declination, uh, this could mean that, you know, our darker nation, uh, darker, see, there's a tiger just came up behind me, that our darker forces will want to come out. But Jupiter winning the planetary war by virtue of being brighter, however being debilitated, means that ultimately our lighter nature will come out. And so if this is the emergence of a king or the birth of a king or a queen or a leader, then let's celebrate it as such. And, you know, um, when the Buddha was born, great astrologers also looked at his chart and said, this person will be a king, a great king or a great yogi. And so the question is, who do you want to be? Uh, if Buddha had been a great king, he would have been heralded by his own people, but he would have been hated by the people that he conquered, the people he killed, whose wives he, he separated from their husbands, whose land he took, right? Instead, he chose to be a great mystic and a saint. And so he has united the world, not just in his generation, but in later generations, much as was Christ's journey while on the planet and many, many hundreds and thousands of years after his life. So this is the decision that you and, and I all have to make. Do we choose our darker nature or do we choose to become kings and conquerors of this world and get a short-term benefit? Or do we go for the longer term, uh, the more subtle, uh, but ultimately the more satisfying route, which is the route of purifying ourselves during the season, setting our intentions, and um, and watching them flower. Because this nakshatra, this, the, 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 the general place where uh, this conjunction lives is in a very auspicious kind of star that suggests uh, the ability to triumph over obstacles. All right, um, that's it. That's all all out of me today. Thank you again for pointing out <clears throat> the uh, mild error there in, uh, in, in my previous video. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. All right. Namaste, everyone.